Hey everyone, Cursed here. We're looking at a Lorcan Warlock Collector deck uh, on a budget. So we're going to look at the final list. They're hoping to use a lot of sacking and worried about not gaining enough life and not making enough mana. So let's take a look at this deck. All right, it's actually the first time I'm really looking at Lorcan. So whenever a creature card is put in an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may pay life equal to its mana value. If you do, you gain control of it, basically. And if a warlock you control dies, exile it instead. Okay, so they're worried about ramp and they're worried about life gain. First of all, uh, black's my favorite color, so I'm already a big fan of a mono black design. But it's good to know that the thing we're looking for is life gain. So I I see what's happening here where you can see with Falconrath Noble, there's and Zulpor Cutthroat and Blood Artist, there's a direction to go aristocrats with this uh, in order to mitigate the life loss, but this isn't gonna work because Lorcan uh, exiles the creatures you gain from your opponents, which are primarily the cards you're going to want to exile. Sorry, you want to sacrifice. So unfortunately, that means every single time you sacrifice one of their creatures, you will not get any Blood Artist triggers out of it. Um, so that's a little tricky, and I think that's intended. Well, I think it's intended they added this so that they couldn't, you couldn't loop it indefinitely. Oh yeah, definitely to stop that, but that is kind of a problem. So, and I see that you've also figured out, I should also sit, talk to the creator of the deck. This is Rengoku of Fire. Uh, I can see that they also have realized that having a seven mana commander is tough. So their goal is to rush out. You have a few fat, fast mana things here, and we have a large amount. Okay. Okay, so we're on a budget, so I'm not going to suggest cards you can't uh, that I wouldn't suggest to someone on a budget. I don't know what the budget is, but we're going to keep it low. The first few things I have to think about is Mono Black has a low threshold for ramp. Outside of uh, Cabal Coffers, which obviously we're not going to put in here, it's kind of tricky to hit a high amount of mana without over investing straight into mana rocks because we could probably run and i would recommend to running two to three more um obviously like solemn simulacrum effects there's the uh elk uh whose name i always forget uh it's not alkyl creature elk and then artifacts so if there's only one artifact out yeah burnish heart Cards like Burnish Heart are nice here because Black just does not have a high amount of ramp. But the alternative method of getting there, and what I would recommend, is that we would make this build into a more controlling kind of build, where we're going to buy ourselves the time to get to seven mana. Sure, we're going to try to ramp here and there, but we're going to try to take advantage of the fact that you're already playing board clears, you're already playing playcrafter, anime playcrafter effects. Uh, we're also already playing uh, Innocent Blood should be in here for the same idea. Just a really nice one mana, maybe kill four creatures. Yeah, we want to make it to seven mana because what's going what's gonna to happen and it's going to not feel very good is you're going to hit five mana you're going to Dark Ritual into Lorcan, and then someone's going to counter it or remove it. Um, I think the goal is going to... Once you have Lorcan in play, and then you have one effect that uh, will trigger Lorcan, the game's probably going to end. Uh, the advantage you're going to get is really, really high, because it's important to remember that in our modern age of Commander, our opponents are playing strong creatures. Outside of maybe getting a few elves here and there that tap for mana, which won't be as great, most creatures you're going to grab will either have 
like enter the battlefield effect or some other effect that's going to further your game. So I think I think the life life loss is something that's real, but primarily we're going to want to look to make it to seven mana. My thoughts are going to also go towards more of a discard style build. So I'm thinking of cards now. We're going to find out how uh, painful memories. Uh, we're going to find out how uh, no painful quandary. Uh, we're going to find out how expensive these cards are because I'm not sure how much they fit into a budget. Painful Quandary, fantastic card. This is a really good controlling card that will also trigger Lorcan as needed. After that, let's look at Bottomless Pit. Just for two bucks, uh, have your opponents discard at random. And there's one more whose name escapes me. Cast a spell, discard. Um, let's do this. How many cards? A lot. So let's sort by mana value and get to three. Next page. Huh. What am I missing? There's a there's a card that says whenever a whenever a player casts a spell, they must discard a card. Card, enchantment, black, three mana. There it is, oppression. Ooh, oppression is expensive. Okay, unfortunately this will be out of your budget, but cards like these, where, which is further going along Plague Crafter or Grave Lighter style effects, where we're going to try to pressure our opponent's hands, we're going to play some soft stacks effects to slowly pressure all our opponent's hands in order to allow us to get for, uh, get ahead on card advantage and mana, and then later these abilities are going to trigger Lorcan. Looking at Frexian Arena, that's fine. We this will also work with cards like Black Market, which are particularly important. And what we're going to do, what we can do is also, it would fundamentally change the deck. So I'm going to leave it up to you. How much, uh, how much black mana style like control we're gonna want? Let's go to EDH Rec. Let's really quickly we're gonna look at life gain in mono black and see if there's a see that there's an overlap between these two strategies. Uh, we don't need the commanders. We're gonna want we want effects that will pressure our opponent's life totals and their boards. Sign and Blood is definitely something you should be playing, but I don't like using EDH Rec too much. I just like it to get ideas and then step out of it because you sometimes get stuck going in a particular direction, which is not always what you want to do. You don't always want to do what all your opponents, all your opponents, all, all players are doing with a deck because it's not necessarily the strongest thing you can do. All right, let's look at Sorceries. Love Tide, Reanimate. Doesn't look like there's a lot that will cover both of these, unfortunately. Yeah, so instead, I think I think the best bet instead is we're gonna we're gonna look for increasing the number of board clears. I know we're on a budget, but it's cards like Languish, um, there is one that counts the number of swamps. Minus X number swamps. Corrupt, but I am more looking for... Huh. Bad day for remembering card names. Uh, well, I'll get back to it after. It's minus X minus X for each swamp you control, which at first is going to be languish at four mana. And after that, it's going to grow stronger and stronger. Cards like those will be strong. Uh, general punishing discard cards will be strong. Yeah, I think I think the direction of sacrifice is good, but you're going to have to take out... Either you're going to have to take out the blood artist effects, or you're going to have to push into them even further. And by that, I mean you're going to want to build an aristocrat's deck with Lorcan as your alternative win con. 
So this is the exact opposite of how you could take this deck, where instead of bringing it, making it more controlling and ensuring that you'll make it to seven mana, what you can do instead is just say you don't care about that, lean in further to the aristocrat's playstyle, which I'll go over in a second, and then after which, once you hit seven mana, you're just gonna write, like play Lorcan and just use use it for its effect. Not build around it, not think too much about it, not worry about discard or mill to get the cards you want, but you're just going to use it that it is a 6-6 six, six flyer, and as your opponents lose cards, or even counter or destroy each other's cards, you are going to reap the spoils. If that's the direction you're going to want to go in, the one thing this Aristocrats deck would be missing would be uh, Sacrifice Fodder. So I'm thinking about... Is it Restless Skeleton? No, it's Reassembling. I would say Blood Gas, but I'm sure that's out of your um, out of your budget. Cards like Reassembling Skeleton, cards that come back from the dead, or on Earth, or cards that bring back your creatures at low mana costs are going to be very strong here. Because not only are you going to want to rebuy yeah, not only do you want to rebuy cards like Plague Crafter and Grave Lighter, you're gonna and Fleshbag Marauder, you're also gonna to want to get back your Blood Artist creatures. I think maybe that'd be a more fun way to play this deck. Um, unfortunately, it will take away from the Lorcan aspect of the deck to just kind of go into an Aristocrats deck, but it is probably the thing that'll fix your life problems. And your life gain problems, I should say. And with that, that'll that'll let you push into the late game. One thing I will okay, uh, I will speak briefly about cuts right now before I go any further. Cards like Profane Mento, uh, Memento, Demon's Horn, Staff of the Death Mages. I would really recommend not using these cards. I understand where you're going with them, where you're trying to get incidental life gain. And I can see why a card like Death Greeter feels very similar. And there might even be an argument for that Death Greeter is easier to remove from play than a card like Profane Memento um, or even Demon's Horn. Death Greeter can be sacrificed. Death Greeter is a blocker. Death Greeter can attack. Um, it fits into the strategy a lot more to have those life gain effects and if you've been seeing lately in magic they have printed a lot of blood artist effects with different names lately most of them have two colors but there has been a good amount of one color i think vran was one of the newer ones and i think vran is the kind of card um uh vran is the kind of card that benefits like people look down on Vran because it is a it only triggers once a turn. There we go. Vran. Oh, there's two A's, I see. Ooh. Okay, I think uh Scryfall's just having a hard time. So we'll use Google search. Vran uh Vran says whenever one or more creatures you control die, each opponent loses two and you gain two. Now people don't like Vran because you can't trigger it multiple times a turn. But a deck like yours, that's not as much of a problem. You're, you're looking for a huge amount of sacrifices all at once. You're looking for um, to get a little bit of advantage of each turn and benefit from... Let's see if I can get Viserys here. And to try to benefit from gaining an additional life here and there. So I would, uh, I would recommend that. Viserys here is a classic sacrifice outlet. I would recommend it. Also very cheap. Um, there's a few others like that because right now a lot of your sack outlets are at three mana and having one or two where you can sacrifice on other people's turn for free would be very helpful otherwise I think this deck is very very good it's a, it's a straightforward strategy it's a good budget strategy you have a lot of ways to interact with your opponents you have you have cheap board clears and you have removal that you know with sacrifice cards like playcraft get around a lot of traditional protection 
you know, indestructible creatures, regenerate, planeswalkers. This is very good at clearing out all of them. And there is this attitude people have that sacrifice isn't as strong because they'll you just get the weakest creature they have. But that's not what you're doing. You're doing turn by turn, like sacrifice. Cards of Mages of the Abyss, even a Plane Crafter or Fleshback Marauder, each turn, it pushes, it pushes the amount of cards they can have on the table. Your opponents will eventually just give up uh, on trying to maintain cards. Like no one's gonna run out their commander alone when you're on the uh, when you're in the playgroup with this deck. Because it might as well just be, you know, whatever mana cost the commander is to just put it back in the command zone. Uh, player sacrifice. I believe there's another one, Merciless Executioner, which I'm not sure if you had. Yeah, that's another three mana version of this creature. Um I don't know the cost of this card, so I'm going to check it before... Yeah, it's six bucks. Heartless Summoning, I'm just going to recommend it anyways. It is a card that wouldn't hurt here. It turns your three mana creatures into one mana creatures. You don't mind. They're going to die anyways. It lets you operate at a lower... Uh, it gives you the ramp factor for Lorcan, but it also lets you operate at a lower mana cost just across the board for all your creatures. It does not work with Blood Artist, so use it, use it, uh, use it sparingly. Or you're gonna need to use something like Bad Moon to just, you know, make up for that, which I don't particularly like, but it's not a bad idea. Um... Okay, I went a bit longer on this one because I think there's several different directions the deck can take, but I like the idea. So once again, just to wrap it up. I would recommend either going into a full aristocrat style where Lorcan is just your side uh, win condition in your command zone and you don't worry too much about casting them. Or if you really want to cast Lorcan and you really want to get the ability, you should be building a control deck. A control deck that aims to use a lot of discard effects to activate Lorcan. And in addition, use those discard effects to prolong the game past turn six or seven so you can just naturally play Lorcan, and then those discard effects will still be around with Lorcan in order for you to steal their creatures. Um, you won't have as much life gain in a deck like that, and I think that's okay. I think you're, you're gonna have to be a little pickier with the cards you select. This isn't Command the Dreadhorde, where where you're aiming to bring back like a ton of creatures all at once and wow everyone with the huge army you just built. Lorcan has May in it for a reason. You're going to have to be selective. You're going to have to pick the cards that really matter to you and you're going to have to let a few cards go. All right, I hope this deck assist helped. I'm cursed and I, uh, I hope you, you keep brewing. <laughs>